Standard Chartered has just been accused by the New York District Financial Regulator of breaching sanctions to Iran over about a $250 billion worth of business. It's threatened it with removing its banking license and with a big fine. I'm here with Peter Sands, Chief Executive of Standard Chartered. What was your first response to these allegations? Well, as we've made clear, we were very surprised um, by the announcement by the New York Department of Finance, Financial Services on Monday. And we strongly reject um, both the position and the, the facts, the portrayal of the facts um, by the DFS. Um, we differ on a range of matters of substance, fact and argument. There's a huge difference between the volume of transactions that they allege are questionable, $250 billion they're putting uh, on that uh, bill, versus the $14 million um, p possible transgressions that you are admitting to. Uh, how can you explain that uh, Well, the, the fundamental uh, explanation comes down to um, uh, the definition of U-turn payments, which was the U-turn mechanism was one set up by U.S. authorities to allow non-U.S. entities to trade in U.S. dollars with Iran during this period. And we're talking about the period 2001 to 2007. To get to any number around $250 billion, you basically have to assume the whole U-turn payment mechanism was somehow invalid. Um, what we did was um, a very, very detailed analysis of all the transactions that we had conducted under the U-turn mechanism, um, some 150 million payments we analysed, and of those, um, over 99.9% .9 were valid U-turn transactions in the sense that they began and ended with non-US entities, although they were cleared um, in New York. There were a few that were non-compliant. Um, those transactions amounted in value to $40 million. We're sorry that they occurred. They were largely sort of administrative mistakes. There was nothing um, intentional or particularly sort of problematic about any of those transactions. We've analyzed every single one of them um, individually. Um, some of them were caused by things like not understanding that the recipient had dual citizenship, i.e. we thought they were one they were an Asian citizenship, but actually they also had US citizenship. So there were a range of explanations like that. Um, but that 14 million was clearly um, errors, um, non-compliant um, transactions. Regardless of the merit of these accusations, reputational damage has certainly been done. I think one thing that worries investors and analysts the most is whether you lose your US banking license. Is that a realistic possibility? Well, we're very committed to the U.S. as part of our overall global business. As you know, our business is focused on Asia, Africa and the Middle East, but we do a lot of business between the U.S. and Asia, Africa and the Middle East. The dollar clearing business itself is important, but not that large directly. Um, but I think we're, uh, we're at a very early stage in talking about these things, and I think any suggestion that our um, license or ability to do dollar clearing be removed would be wholly um, disproportionate and without precedent in such cases. You're due to meet with Benjamin Lorsky, the head of the regulator in the US, and other officials next week. Could you tell me what you plan to say to him? Well, we are already um, in discussion with all the regulators, all the agencies we have been in discussion with, because as we've made clear before, um, we, we initiated a review of our historical um, sanctions um, compliance with um, US dollar payments um, back in, um, well, we initiated the discussions back in early 2010. Um, we've been engaged with the DFS um, and with other regulators in the wake of the um, announcement on Monday and we will continue to be talking through with them um, all the issues and we will be contesting um, a lot of the points um, that have been made um, in the um, announcement that the DFS has just made. Just one final thing, it's pretty unusual to see a bank respond quite so feistily to a regulatory uh, investigation. Um, you obviously have done so because you feel very strongly about uh, the inaccuracy of the allegations uh, against you. Is that sustainable? Can you, will it have lasting damage, you think, in terms of relationship with regulators, which are obviously pretty important? Well, 
we take very seriously our reputation, and our reputation has been damaged. Um, I, I don't think there's any, it's not worth pretending that it isn't, that isn't the case. Um, uh, we also take very seriously um, our relationship um, with our regulators, and we have been very active in communicating um, not just with the DFS, but with the, all the regulators we deal with around the world about this situation, about what the facts are, what our stance is, and what our approach is. Um, and we will continue to take that approach. We take very seriously our obligations to comply with all the relevant rules and regulations and laws. Um, we see that as um, an absolutely essential part of being a good, well-run bank, uh, and we will continue to take that approach. And we do believe in having sort of trust-based and uh, good relationships with all our regulators, and we hope we can, we can continue to have that in the US. And do you think you'll be able to settle this matter quickly going forward? I hope that we can um, resolve these matters um, expeditiously and in a sensible manner. Peter Sands, thanks very much. Thank you, Patrick.